What's up everybody, JJ here, and this week I've been reviewing a pretty interesting product. This right here is the Beagle Camera. It serves to kind of replace your Raspberry Pi webcam web interface connection to your Raspberry Pi, puts it all in one single package, everything you need is right here, and it's supposed to be very easy to use as well. Of course, I was pretty skeptical going into this. Octoprint is super great. I mean, most of the videos on this channel are using Clipper and setting up and getting it connected to the internet, getting time lapses working, all of these things that this thing says it should be very easy to set up. So the two big questions we've got to answer today is just how easy is it to get it set up? And the second one is what are you sacrificing to go this route? Even on their website, they do say there's things you're giving up going this route than the Raspberry Pi Octoprint or especially the Clipper route. But I do think for the right person, some of those sacrifices you're giving up might be worth it for the ease of use. In the box, of course, you get the camera. This is a pretty big, bigger than I thought. It's about, you know, palm size. Big thing, really nice. I love the part of the base where it swivels up and down and also rotates. So wherever you're mounting it, you're able to rotate it. A lot of the webcams I've used, I have the Logitech C920, maybe it's whatever, I'll put a picture of it right here. And that one doesn't have side to side control, which where I have it mounted kind of isn't the best. I have to just sort of unscrew it just a little bit and that doesn't make it a super solid mount versus this just really nice to have. Also in the box you've got basically all the cables you need. It's powered off of USB-C and then there's a USB-A port here. You connect from the USB to your printer with whether it's a micro USB or USB-B. And then there's a spot for a micro SD card in here. On their website if you were selecting this you could select 32 or 64 gigabyte versions or you could just put your own in there later. You start with the 32. It's probably plenty for most people because these Time lapses aren't going to be all that big, and once you download them off there, you can just delete them as you're downloading. And then if you need a ton of storage, you can upgrade to, they say it goes up to 128 gigabyte micro SD cards, will work on here. There's also this quick start guide, and it was pretty good to get up and running. First off, you just download the app, and then the app really steps you through all of it. There's a little speaker on the back of here that will even give you some voice commands at certain points through here to let you know what it's doing. I did have some trouble when connecting to the Wi-Fi of this, and then I fixed, I tried two things at the same time, and I'm not sure which of those things was most important. We have Google Wi-Fi routers here, and that's a dual band, so both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz are kind of linked together and you can't select just one or the other. So I had heard online that some people have some issues with some IoT connected devices that only work on 2.4. It will try to connect to 5. And so the workaround they say is to get far enough away from your router and then your phone will switch to 2.4 and then it will work. So I walked away. I also did something at that same time. When you first you power this on and then you'll connect to its hotspot and then I noticed a notification was popping up on my phone saying that there's no internet connection with this hotspot, which of course there's not going to be. And this time when I was outside, I clicked on that and told it to stay connected even though there's no internet connection there. So that might have been an issue with why I was having trouble when inside. So if you're having trouble connecting, I'm not sure if one or both of those were important. But beyond that little setback, everything else was fairly easy. This little booklet, it's small, but it explains everything you need. I think a big part of why it's so easy to set up is that there's not a ton of configuration that they give to you, which is a pro and a con. You can't adjust everything, but it means it just works. I remember the first time I tried to set up Octoprint, you're first greeted with a huge page of settings and so many things you can change and tweak. Whereas with this, there's very few things you really can change because you don't need to change things. It really just works. And there's of course some huge stipulations that go with that. And I think a big part of it is compatibility. The compatibility with this camera isn't as expansive as Octoprint would be. Octoprint will work with any printer and you can go in there and fine tune it for a custom built printer you build yourself. But this one, it only works with certain printers. And so they've got all the settings already configured for those printers. So once I had the Beagle connected to Wi-Fi, it connected to the app. In the app, I could see what the IP address was. I went over to my computer, connected to that IP address. And then it's very similar to Octoprint looking screens and menus felt very familiar, except very toned down. There's not a ton of menus and pages and extra things you can do, but that does make it pretty easy the first time you're setting it up. So I uploaded some G-code, 
told it to start printing, and already, maybe 30 minutes after taking this out of the box, this was the time lapse I was getting out of it. And probably 15 minutes of that was trying to get the Wi-Fi to connect. So if you don't have those issues and click on the notification when it correctly pops up, like you're supposed to, then you could get time lapses out of your 3D printer within 20 or 30 minutes. Easy. So when it comes back to that first question of was it easy to set up, I think they did follow through with their promise. It's a very easy thing to get working. Now I do think it's important to talk about the downsides and the cons that come with this. So when it comes to the cons and downsides to this printer, there's two sort of categories. There's big issues and little issues. And I think the little issues can be explained by it's a new company and a really new product, new software, and they're continually developing and upgrading. And I sent them a whole list of little nice to have features that I do think they can totally implement in future updates. Little things like the time-lapse files that are created, I wish they would include the file of the G-code you just printed. Or for uploading G-code, I wish you could drag and drop into the web page. That would just make things a little bit easier. And there were even more little nice to have features that they did have included on their website of things they are currently working on. But I don't really see those as deal breakers one way or another of whether to get a product like this or not. But on the side of bigger issues I did have with this, and the biggest one is quality of the time lapses I'm getting out of this. If you're sharing them with friends or just want to have time lapses on your own, then they're fine. They're good little videos to have. They're fun to look at. But if you want to really post these on social media, if you are a content creator, this isn't really what to go for. As you can see in these time lapses, they're time lapses, but the quality just isn't there. There's a lot of video compression and blockiness. This is even with my really good studio light lighting on the printer at all times. I tried several different situations to see if I could improve that quality, but I never got video as good as I was getting out of just a basic Logitech C920. And if you hook up any real sized camera on there, you're gonna blow away anything you get out of this. And the downside to this is that it's not a replaceable camera. I really wish I could tether a high quality camera to this or even upgrade that webcam in there. I think if they released a Beagle Camera Pro, call it a bigger, call it a Great Pyrenees or something. I think Ada would love to be your sponsor like that. She's sleeping in the corner behind one of my lights. But something with a really high quality camera on there, I think would take this from a decent product to an amazing product. I do think it's interesting how this was able to complete half of its tasks really well. It is so easy to set up. It gives you a web interface. It gives you app support where you can connect to your printer from anywhere. Start, stop, pause, prints. But I do think you should be realistic about the quality of time lapses and videos you're going to be getting from a camera like this. And that's even with adjusting the focus on here. There's four screws on the back you can take off and then the camera is really easy to adjust focus. The lens rotates to get it, you know, farther or closer. And so I did adjust the focus, but it's just a low quality video you're going to be getting out of a camera like this. So if you have a printer that's still running Marlin and you want easy to use Wi-Fi connectivity and app connectivity from anywhere, I'm still going to be using this on my Artillery Hornet because that is one of the few printers I have around here that's still running Marlin. But I won't be using the time-lapse feature of this camera because it adds so much extra time onto your prints. Every single layer your print head will move to the side of the printer and move back and you'd be surprised at how much extra time you can add. And the quality of the videos really isn't worth it for me. So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful for anyone who's curious about something like this. I will have links for it in the description down below. And while you're down there, hitting that like and subscribe button always helps me out and put any questions as well. But anyway, I hope this has maybe helped some people out, answered some questions. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.